listening to The Sakura Project. or days but weeks that Sasuke traveled western deserts alone. To him, all of it ought to have ended as soon as he left the canyon. Instead, he ran. He ran and didn't stop for what seemed like eons. For the first time in his life, he had felt what fear was like. True fear. The sort of fear that made him look back every time he fell on his knees when they gave out. His heart beat out of his chest as muscles pulsed in agony. They could have been a mile off, a thousand feet off, maybe even behind him at the very moment. He knew he had to get away. Sasuke learned not to think when he ran away from trouble. His body simply did it, out of pure instinct. He struggled up to his feet, his very bones aching as though they were being sliced with the hardest knife. Simply a shame. He collapsed on the floor, mouth dry and lungs hurting. The air was acrid, thick with the gust which carried the sand south. He could no longer see, no longer hear anything, but the howl of the wind and the sand against his ears. Sasuke struggled to get up. <coughs> Tears welled in his eyes as he thought of his once remaining family. I'm going to die here. This is it. This is where it's all going to end. In the middle of this damn desert. Buried alone in a sandstorm. I'm going to die. And there's nothing I can do. We failed. It was all for nothing. How pathetic. The last Uchiha dying in the desert without anything to show for it. We ran for years, and in the end, for what? What he saw in front of him was blurry from the sand in his eyes. But he'd soon see the distant dunes melting into the distant canyon. There was something surprisingly surreal about knowing everything around you was a lie. To know that his eyes, which had become a source of pride and could no longer discern truth from illusion. His body betrayed his senses, and his senses betrayed logic. Thirst felt like ice on his tongue, and the sweat that would trickle down in beads felt like knives that sliced his face open. And yet he did not bleed. He felt cold, yet he did not shiver. His lungs could not catch enough air as he suffocated. He forced himself to recall brother's face, trying his best to remember and focus on it. The pain and hunger distorted his mind, and so he could not recall the details. Squint would not clear his view, but instead only washed out the image in his mind. There were no longer features, no longer a face to match the voice in his mind that told him it would all be okay. How long has it been? Do I even have a brother? Am I still alive when so many others died? Why the hell am I still alive? Come on, death. You bastard. Take me already. Kill me. Get it over with. Sasuke closed his eyes, resigned to his fate. And for a brief moment, he failed nothing. 
Episode 1, Sanctuary in the Desert. The devil's gonna set me free. What the... What's that sound? Slowly he awakened. His skin was warm, and his face cooled against the thick, soft, loamy dirt. I don't... feel dead. But... am I? I hear a girl... the singing. Place to call a home, only chains and broken bones. Ain't got no place to call a home, so come on, Lord. I took your gun already, so don't bother asking. I'm not giving it back, and there's no way in hell you'd be able to get it off me. Uh, my gun! It's not in my holster! Who the hell is she? I wasn't going to attack you. In your condition? It's very unlikely, sir. What the hell is her deal? <clears throat> Here, drink. Huh? You're lucky I came out here prepared. How long have you been struggling in the desert? You're lucky I found you when I did. It took me a good minute to dig your body out of the sand. Your face and feet were the only things sticking out. Yeah. I would have probably died out here had it not been for you. That's why you owe me a blood debt. A blood debt? <laughs> You're an Uchiha from Konoha. You know what a blood debt is. If I save your life, you owe me. I have nothing I can pay you with. No money, no supplies. You have this. Well, had. I'll just take it to protect myself. You don't need it, considering you likely have the Sharingan. How the hell does she know about the Sharingan? Why do you know about that? That I'm from the clan with the kaleidoscope eyes. The Sharingan. What else do you know about me? <laughs> You're an Uchiha. That much is clear. Your look is unmistakable. Well, that and the obvious crest on your coat gives it away. You're all a proud bunch. It's because of reasons like that that your clan is dead. Are you the last one left? I don't know. I wouldn't hold my breath. It's been four years now, since the riots. You're the first one I've seen since I left Konoha myself. You're from Konoha? Born and raised. Trained under the legendary medic Tsunade at Konoha's academy. A medic, huh? That's rare. Even among the chakra users. Well, you know. So you revived me in the desert? That's right. And that's why you owe me a blood debt. Anyone else could have done what you did. Anyone else could have left you there. I hoisted you onto my horse and took you out of the storm. I resuscitated you. If it were anyone else, they would have taken your gun and your bullets and that damn hat of yours which you were too stupid to use for shade and left you for dead. Whatever. I didn't ask for your help. Give me back my gun. Ugh. Don't play with it. I need to get to Sunagakura in one piece. She fiddled with it in her hands inspecting it for something that Sasuke didn't quite get just yet. However, before he could say anything at all to her, she pointed at him. What the hell are you doing? She then pointed it off to the side, towards a boulder, and took a shot. 
You missed. That was a clear shot. And you missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fine. You can have your gun back. I don't like how it feels in my hand anyway. Take your finger off the trigger. Uh, oh, right. Uh, sorry. If that display was any indication, she couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, let alone a person. Yet she carries three guns on her person. And what kind of person points a gun at the person she saved? She's strange as hell. I'll give her that. You wanted my gun, but you have two more. Someone can never have too many guns out here. Isn't it awkward to carry them all? No, but to be fair, I get a lot of use out of them. Do you miss that much? I can shoot you. Well, I have a gun too, and I never miss. Thanks for the save, but I still don't owe you anything. The only thing more irritating than Uchiha pride is Uchiha's stubbornness. How do you know so much about my clan? I already told you. I'm from Konoha. Kind of easy to know about your family and their type. None of you are any different from each other. All selfish, self-centered, self-serving. Hey. Huh? Your name. What is it? Sakura. Sakura Haruno. Never heard of them. <laughs> See, I knew it. Even when someone saves your life, you're no better than you usually are. No, I mean, I've never heard of that clan before. Not in Konoha, at least. Not as a clan of chakra users. We're one of two of the most prestigious clans. It's required that we know every clan of chakra users. Even before we learn our first jutsu. Why haven't I heard of you? We're not well known for our prowess. A new clan onto the scene. That doesn't sound right. What about you? Your name? Sasuke. Sasuke Uchiha. There was a strange shift in the air right as the name was uttered. The wind picked up, slowly at first, but soon grew strong enough that Sakura's hair was waving and flowing in it. Sakura seemed startled, and moved back the slightest bit after a strangely long pause. Something in her eyes had changed, and so when she glanced back up at him, unsettled, it took her a moment to reply back. Sasuke Uchiha... In a blink, her eyes were now downcast, seemingly searching the earth with a thousand yard stare. The sudden change in her behavior piqued his interest. Is something- How did you get here? How did you survive? I thought you were- Dead? Well, I didn't exactly survive on my own. How'd you make it out of Konoha? Your family was- Killed. I know. <sighs> it started not long after those riots you were talking about. I was blind from surgery that granted me powers unparalleled by man. My family was sent to kneel before a massive ditch. The women and children were first. The smell of gunpowder and blood was enough to make even the hardiest of men sick to their stomachs, and the sight enough for them to weep. Guns fired loudly at point-blank range, and those left alive to see the bodies of their wives and children go limp would also be deafened by those same shots. Still, they did not move, for they too felt the cold steel barrels pressed against the back of their heads. They could not hear the laughter of the executions. These law-abiding men in Konoha had choked over the shame of the women's deaths. It was a small mercy to only see them fall into the pit that they had been forced to dig in silence. Fugaku, the leader of the clan and father of Sasuke Uchiha, was even more fortunate. He had afforded his children both the time and power they needed to survive, and given them his eyes before his final battle. With the Monge Kill Sharingan, they at least had a chance to escape the punishment from the coup d'etat he had led. Are you watching? Itachi? Shizui? Sasuke? Do not be a witness to the death of a failure. I hope you have run far away from this place, but the Uchiha name will be yours to carry. You three should not have been involved, for with our crest, name, and blood, you now carry the sigil of a noble. In the distance, they watched him as he raised his head up to the sky. With the second round of fire, he too would fall into the hole. 
Once the man had been executed, the distant figures of the executioners would drop their weapons and pick up shovels, filling mounds of dirt over the massive Uchiha grave. You've been spared a terrible sight. It's too late to save you from the curse of our eyes, Sasuke. Your father wanted you to have the Mangekyo Sharingan, Itachi. You could have taken them. A foolish endeavor. I knew that I would gain those eyes today. Besides, if one of us was unable to see for even half the day, we would have all died. The only one able to spare their sight for the duration of this recovery was Sasuke. I guess so. Still, who knows what's going to happen now. We are wanted men now. For now, we leave this place. There's nothing more to see. The origins of the young boy begins with the story of him and his family victims of a travesty that befell them abruptly. We follow the survivors of this tragic clan next time on Outlaws. Original story by Masashi Kishimoto. This production has been a fan-made radio drama. Please support the official release. All names of staff and voice actors listed in the description. Thank you for listening. Next time in Episode 2, Blood at the Institution. Thank you.